Welcome to Soulful Conversations with Najeda. I'm Najeda Shabuto. I am an empowerment and confidence coach, spiritual teacher, and speaker. And I help, as professionally, I help purpose-driven women coaches and um, online entrepreneurs. So women entrepreneurs, I help them experience ease, clarity, fun, confidence in their businesses by discovering their message and finding their niche. I'm passionate about dance, social justice, spirituality, love, nature, making a difference specifically and making a difference in empowering women and children in my home in Haiti and around the world. And I'm very much passionate about empowering women and really reconnecting with themselves, embracing themselves, themselves and sharing their authentic self boldly with the world, which is very much in line with my work. And I think it's a great time for us women to truly step up, find our voices, and really share ourselves. I am really, my guest, I'm excited about her joining me today, Alisa Green. Actually, this is her second time because the last time I had some internet issues and the interview turned out, I had to share it. Uh, I had to, so thank you. I'm really happy that she gracefully accepted to join me again so we could do this again. So actually, you're going to be um, we're recording this in, in December. You'll be sharing it. Um, you'll be seeing it in January, which is, you know, when you're going to be sharing it. Actually, this is going to be our first episode. So Happy New Year to everyone. Um, so Elisa Green is a human being out of love with, um, born out of love with two beautiful children and two beautiful grandchildren. She is a working entrepreneur with about six months before she retired with 25 years of service in law enforcement. She's a certified life coach, self-care specialist, and a, count, and a connecting catalyst. We were just talking about that. Catalyst, empowering women to uncover their true purpose and passion, and, and passion in life so they can be about their business. She's currently writing a book called um, entitled Call on Courage. I love that. Thank you for joining me today, Elisa. Thank you for having me, my sweet love, Najeda. How are you? I am good. I'm really good. And how about you? I'm doing super fantastic. I hope you can hear I, me good. Yeah, you, yeah, I hear you pretty good. And wow, the, the, about the book, that's pretty exciting. Yes. Yes, I've been working on it. I, I'm not going to lie. I changed the title three times. <laughs> <laughs> well, it'll come out at the right time. It's coming. It's coming. I'm, I'm really working hard on it. And um, it's a lot of work. I didn't want to rush it. I, at first, I was trying to get it out, you know, finish it up in 90 days. But as I began to write, different things started to unfold. So it allowed me to really slow, slow down and take a step back and, and move forward with grace in writing the book because I wanted to make sure that I deliver the way or give birth the way that I'm supposed to. Great. Totally get that. Totally. Now, I know for you, self-care is like your jam. It's your thing. Yes. Did you always feel this way? No, I didn't. I did not always feel this way. Um, but I, 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 I want to say this. I... I'm a, I'm a, I'm a selfish, unselfish person. Okay. Um, but let me, I'm going to stay on course because you know how I am. I like to run off at the mouth and I'll run that sentence on to the never side of tomorrow. So, <laughs> so no, I wasn't always uh, into self-care. I was more into caring for other people more than I care for myself. So I was more of a, a, a to me, a caregiver. I'm giving care to other people and, and I neglected myself. So absolutely not. I have, I, no, no, no. Okay. No. Okay. And for you, so when did it shift? Like what, what, what made it shift? Was there something that happened or maybe a series of incidents where you're just really got that, okay, I need to start making this a priority in my life. Yes. There were a series of things that happened, and um, they happened, you know, they started happening, uh, I want to say my late 20s, uh, early 30s, 
um, and, and, and later in my 30s, that I began to notice that, you know, uh, if I continue to do things for other people, I wasn't going to get things done for myself. And one of those people, and I love my mother to, to death, but I, I, you know, I pray that, you know, she doesn't get mad at me because I'm saying what I'm saying, but it's true. My mother was one of the women who I had to say, mommy, I can't do it. I cannot do it because, um, you know, I, I was the, I was the one that she could really, really rely on at that time. And so I'm running and because I want to please my mother. I want to make my mother happy. I want to do everything that she needs me to do. But at the same time, I'm running around on my days off. And when it's time for me to do what I need to do for me, I have no energy. I have nothing left in me. And I'm not getting anything accomplished. Yeah. Um, I had to uh, tell my mother no. And I think that that was another pivotal point in my life where I really had to start taking a look at self-care, what it what it was, and what else, what I wanted it to really be for me. Mm, I love that. I really love that because I, I like how you shared about you wanted it you wanted to know what you wanted it to be for you. Mm -hmm. So what is self-care for you? Self-care for me is um, taking care of myself. Mind, body, spirit, soul, um, self-care for me is, um, I call it the check-in. And we talked about that before, where yeah. I literally physically go and I check into a hotel. I take my, yeah. laptop, my laptop. I take everything I need. I take a glass of wine. I take my, my bath salts. I take my essential oils. And I go into a hotel, check-in. I tell my kids, do not disturb me unless your grandmother and grandfather calls you. Do not disturb me. And that is my self-care. And, and I really need one. I need I need more than one day. I need two days, to be honest with you. But I only use one day. And sometimes when I take all that stuff, I wind up not even, I just wind up laying in the bed, you know, um, taking my bath, of course, and just meditating and praying and, and, and mapping out what to do next. What's my next move? What would you, so for you, what has, what have you noticed that has shifted for you since you started taking care of yourself, since you started practicing self-care? I noticed a couple of things, to be honest with you, Nadita. I noticed that I started attracting women who um, weren't taking care of me. So I noticed, I noticed women that were not taking care of themselves. Mm -hmm. One. Two, um... I just felt that um, okay, I got distracted. I'm sorry. I it's just okay. so yeah, I noticed other women weren't taking care of themselves, and I noticed that it felt good. It felt good for me. It felt yes. good. It felt right, and that that is how I wanted to live out the rest of my life by really focusing on me and really helping other women focus on themselves by taking care well, of me. Yeah. So tell me, now I know for you, we talked about the whole hotel check-in thing. How often do you do that? And is there, do you have a regular daily practice that you do something to keep yourself, like to care for yourself? Or is that, you know? I try to check in once a month and I don't, necessarily have a specific date because okay. I feel like I feel like when my body requires it you know I know I got to do it I know I have to do it within that month but when my body yes. says it's time that's when I mm. normally like to go now I think it is a good idea to pick a specific date but sometimes the date doesn't always yeah happen. things happen yeah totally yeah things happen yeah so, um, I pack it up and I move it and out you go. Go. Yep. And so do you have a daily practice? Is there something that you do every day to care to care, take care of yourself that, you know, a self-care practice, a daily one? One of my self-care practices, I have a few. One of my self-care practices is to journal, mm. to meditate, okay. 
to drink tea like I have here. I have my tea. I had tea earlier today. I had I actually had lemon water and honey. Warm lemon water mm. and honey. I had that today. And um to stretch. I stretch. I stretch before I go to bed and I stretch when I get up in the morning. Good, that's great. The self care practice. Mm hmm. That is so great. Definitely. And you know what it is? The thing is that it's so interesting how not well, it's not interesting, but how can even be sad how many of us are not doing anything to care for ourselves every day. I We're know. not. Actually, some people see it as a luxury. I don't know why. It's, it's not a luxury. It is a it is essential to your health and well being to your mental health, your physical, your spiritual health, your emotional health. It's so sad to hear that, but I, and I do know that, but it's so, it's, it's so necessary. I, I can't understand why people think that that is something like, you know, something like you reward yourself. No, it's an everyday thing. Mm-hmm, totally. Okay. So when you, I'm curious, because I know sometimes when we're, you know, when we're first putting these practices in our lives, sometimes we struggle with it. Sometimes we may fall off that wagon or whatever. Or for you, did you struggle with any, like having to implement those, having to put them into your life? Did you? Um, yeah, at one, in the beginning, yeah, I struggled because, um, you know, we're creatures of habit. So sometimes I didn't want to do those things, you know. Of course. <laughs> So, you know, I, I'll be honest, sometimes, no, nope, I'm human. I didn't want to do yeah. those things, but once I got into the habit of doing it, it just became like something that's just embedded inside of me that I have to do. Totally. To do. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And um, so the reason why I'm sharing that is because I was asking you that is because you know, I know for me, like you, you know, I've fallen off the wagon and I know that there are women who could be listening to us right now who are actually struggling with it, who have tried and they're like, you know, so I'm curious for you, when you did struggle with it, like were there certain things that you put in place so you could remember or how did you get yourself back in there if you, you know, like you said, you're human. But if you, you know, for you, was it easy to get back on or did you put something or was like, I know for me, when I started meditating, um, I had my, I put it on my calendar on my phone. So I knew what time I was going to bed. So I had like my, something would come off like a reminder says meditation. So I knew I was going to meditate for five minutes. I knew at the time I was working a regular nine to five. So I would set, I had my timer, set, same thing when my alarm goes off, my timer would go off not too long after telling me meditation because I wanted to meditate on my bed before I, you know, after I wake up to before I start getting ready and go to work. So I'm curious for you, like, what would you say that you, you know, because maybe that's, you know, people can use what you've, you've done. I'll go the good old fashioned way. Yep. Because we're so mesmerized and hypnotized by uh, technology. The good old phone works. This is what we have calendars and alarms for. Um, you know, you can use your post-its as a reminder. You can put, you can, you can put a post, you, you can put a post on your Facebook page to remind you to do what it is that you need to do for yourself. You can have yeah. an accountability partner that's going to ride out with you and say, girl, did you practice your self-care today? Uh, you, it, it's so many different ways. It's, it's, it's simply up to the individual, up to the woman who really wants to care for herself, who really has enough compassion for herself and enough love for herself to really, really do what it is that she wants and needs to do for herself. So use your phone, write it down as a reminder, use a post-it, set your alarm, have an accountability partner, um, Put it on Facebook, Instagram, wherever you want to do it. Put it on your front door. Put it on your keychain. Put it everywhere to remind yep. you that no one is better than you and you matter. Yes. And if you're not doing these things for yourself, you cannot be of service to anyone else. See, we're all on a mission. I believe we're all on a mission. 
I believe we all have assignments. And I believe that in order for us to do that, um, we're, we need the energy to do it. So how are we how are we maintaining our energy to do things on the outside of us when we're not doing things that we need to do on the inside of us? Yes. You know what? I, there's something that you said. I mean, I love everything you just shared, but there's something that you said that I was like, wow, this is so important and it's so key. The thing that you said, you matter. Yeah. Because here's the thing for many of us, especially those of us women who are very much about caring other people, in some way, there's a part of us is like, oh, we're selfish if we take care of ourselves. Or we actually don't know that we matter. Yeah. So that's why we're not caring for ourselves. Yeah, I think we've been, I think we've been brainwashed and we've, we've, we've allowed ourselves to believe, and we look at what our parents and our aunties and our, all the strong women in our family, we look at them and we watch what they do. They're in the kitchen, they're cleaning, they're cooking, they're, they're coming home from work, they're taking care of families, taking care of husbands, they're doing all this stuff. They don't get foot massages. They don't get massages at all. They don't have me time. They don't have tea time. They don't have any time. Yeah. The essence. And we are not taking advantage of it when it comes to us. We matter. You know, yes. You know what? What you just said is so interesting. So my mom was in town. She was visiting from Haiti. And she just left this week, earlier this week. And listen to this. On Monday... The, the day before she was leaving, I went out to go get my, you know, I was out of my vitamins and I went to go get her medicine, whatever, before she left. And I went and I wanted to do an Epsom salt bath, but I had went, you know, with the full moon, I, cause I wanted to, I was going to do my sage the day after I was going to do my sage and I wanted to do my Epsom salt bath and everything. So I was out of Epsom salt and I went and I got some. And then when I came, she saw it. She's like, oh, you use that? And I'm like, yeah. And she said, oh, my God, I have a bunch in Haiti. And, you know, I have two huge bags. I don't even use it. If I knew, I would have brought them to you. Oh my God. And you know, I was like, oh, if you're not using them. But then I got me thinking. And she said, my aunt in New York sends them to her. Okay. And I'm like mom i'm like why don't you use them and she complains of like aches and pains yeah. and i'm like like for her she was like oh, i don't do this because it's like and i was thinking about how for her she doesn't take time to give herself a bath right right and it's not like she doesn't have a tub or anything you know what i mean but it's just that it got me think, you know and what you just said about how like for example I was raised, although, you know, my family is pretty much like, well, in some things, I can't say that, you know, men are more than, but I remember growing up in Haiti and seeing how the guys, like, first of all, like, whenever we would have, like, big, huge dinners, like, people, a lot of people, mm -hmm. they would have paper plates for most for most people, but the man had like the regular silver, you know, the regular plate. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And a lot of times too, the women would like go get food for their men and then Serve the put food for themselves. Like, so in some way, it's like in, in a way, like, you know, I actually have one of my coaches, you know, she was, she was, she had a bit, uh, live about, you know, where she was talking about how, she went to this mastermind for millionaires and she said there were only three women, including herself mm -hmm. and how there's not, when you're looking at the speaking industry, there's not that many women, but in some way, not that I want to veer off the topic, but it's kind of like, it's the same thing with the self care. Like women, we're not putting ourselves in business settings. We're not putting ourselves, we're not taking risks and all of this stuff. And in same thing, it's like for a lot of us, we were raised that, we have to take care of the men, mm. you know, like I have my sister-in-law and she's like 50. A few months ago, I went to her house. She made dinner. I mean, it was, we were just all together. So she made some, she whipped up something really fast. Right. So her and I were the only women there. And I think there were like three other men aside from my brother. I mean, well, my brother included. So I go, cause I was in the, in the pool. So I go and I'm like, okay, I want to wash up before I go. I sit down for dinner. So then I get there, guess what? She had 
I don't remember exactly, but it could have been like she had set the table for the guys and she hadn't set the table for me. Oh, no. Like, but it was, something was done. And I remember like, wait a minute, you're being sexist, sexist here. And I remember actually one of the guys, he was like, oh, that's my nickname now. It's like, oh, Najeda, her, that's her nickname, sexism, sexism. <laughs> oh my God, sexism. But here's the thing is that, I, let me tell you, like, I actually, I remember when I first, when my brother first started, you know, then when they first got together and everything, like, I would go to their home, I would go to their house, when they got together, they lived together, I would go there, and my brother is not really like that, but her brothers show up, and she's like, oh, what do you want me to get for them? Like, she would fix them a plate. I think that's more, I think that's culture. But even even as even as um, it being a culture or you know in the culture, that sometimes you have to come up out of it. But yes, we're we're so used to um, that culture and that custom, we don't even realize that that's what we're doing. Yes, if it were me and I was and it was you know men at my house, <laughs> you know the. <laughs> What do you mean, the one making the plate for you? Yes, the little part of me will say, get up and fix your own damn plate. You know, but the hostess in me, I will serve, but I won't, and, and you know, if it's a mixture of people, I won't serve the, the men before the women. I will probably, to be honest with you, and it might sound sexist, I might serve the women before I serve the men. You know, <laughs> because that's just, that's just what it is for me. So yeah. I think that a part of it is culture, and it's so sad because it's okay to recognize good men and want to treat them good, but it's another thing when we are not treating ourselves good. That's and, that's, and that's what I was going to say. It's not even about how, okay, it's not even that, oh, you can't serve somebody food or even, no, it's, it's the thing about, wait, why do they have to go first? Or it's the thing about, because or like how you're caring for them, but you're not caring for yourself, right. which is what you were saying in a way you experienced it. You were doing with your mom in a way, or if you were felt depleted, you know? So totally. And then the thing is that, and then we wonder why we're resentful because we do build up. And angry <laughs> and tired. And angry. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. So totally get that. So tell me, so what would you say to a woman who is not, you know, caring for herself? Like, what would you say to her in terms of, like, telling her the importance of doing so? This is what I would say to her. I would say, love, you do understand that we need you. Love, you do understand that in order for you to exist in this world, you do know that you have to do the essentials for yourself, yes. But you do know that you have to tend to your mind, your body, your soul, your spirit. You do understand that we need you, but we need you whole. We need you yep. happy. We need you happy. We need you healthy. We need you energized. We need your energy. And we need for you to care for your damn self. That's what we need you to do. We need for you to care for yourself. We need for you to get your foot massages. We need for you to journal. We need for you to just meditate. We need to you. We need for you to pass the nails and the hair and the all of that stuff. We need for you to tend to the inside, to your heart. That's what we need. That's what I would tell women. That's what totally. We need. And you know what? Yes, I love what you just said when you talked about. Yes, because I I think I remember. I don't know. I think I had another guest before or something that. Like, a lot of people, when they think of self-care, they're like, oh, yeah, I go and get a massage. Not that it's not great, but they also see very much pampering. And you know how my audience, a lot of us are, you know, most of, you know, most of my, they're women entrepreneurs. And a lot of us, at times, we've had to sacrifice. We've had to, like, take things away when we were building our businesses. Like, just today, I was listening to one of my fellow entrepreneurs who recently took a leap, and she left her nine to five, and she said, she used to have a house, you know, somebody to clean. She got rid of it for now. You know, she doesn't get her nails done as much as before. So that is the thing. But then somebody would be thinking, well, oh, but that's self, you know, to them, that's self-care. But like you said, that's, that's taking care of the outside. Not that it's not good. I mean, it feels good to do it, you know. 
it feels good to do it, but it's like sometimes we're like, well, I don't have money. Well, you know, you don't need the money to meditate. No, you don't. You don't need the money to journal. You don't need money to walk, take a walk in the park. You don't need money to sit on a bench and watch the leaves fall. You don't need money to watch the sunset, the moon rise. You don't need money to do those things. Yeah. And I do agree with, yeah, get you know, have a house clean and clean your house, but not because um, you're, you're privileged, but maybe because that's something that you may want to treat yourself, but that's not a part of self-care. No. Self-care is really about doing what's necessary for you to do in order for you to keep going. Yes. That's what self-care is. Mm -hmm. It's necessary for you in order for you to keep yourself just flowing and going. Totally. Yes. Like, for example, I have to tell you, like, for me, my daily thing, especially, I mean, I had kind of like, I wasn't doing it as much when it got really, really hot for the summer. But mm -hmm. the weather, although... Well, we're supposed to get a cold front soon, but actually, as I was getting ready, I was like, she's in New Jersey. You're in New Jersey, right? Yes. I was like, she's in New Jersey. I know it's cold. And I'm like, me, it's like hot in Miami. Yes. You know, but basically, it's, it's cooler in the mornings now, a little cooler compared to, I was like, you would wake up, like, it's like at seven in the morning, it was like, it, would, or it was already feeling like high 80, 90. Well, oh my god yes yeah. so i wasn't doing that but now that it's getting cooler because it's like 60s 70s depending on the you know how early or in you know depending on the morning like mm -hmm. i think next week we're gonna like this weekend we're gonna be in the 50s in the morning but mm -hmm. basically i now what did you say the 50s is like the summertime here during i know right i know so we you know for me Sorry, I make it a point, speaking of what you were saying, like to take care of you so you could show up, so you could keep going. I make it a point that in every morning I wake up, I get myself ready. I, you know, I just put my thing to, I go for a walk. And where I go for the walk is by the water. Mm. I then sit on a bench and I meditate. I do my tapping. I meditate. I pray. And then I walk back. And let me tell you, Sometimes I'm like, oh, wait, because if I had a late night or something and I'm like, oh, but maybe I need to cut this short. And I realized, wait a minute, I'm cutting short, take care of me. Mm -hmm. Obviously, like, the, like a Friday, I had to take care of something with my mom. So I did my tapping and my five minutes meditation. You know, I did, you know, because I, I didn't have much. A lot. But usually for the most part, and I think it's so important, and I started making it a point. I'm like, you know what? That's me taking care of me. That's how I can show up. That's how I can make a difference for people. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, I did leave that out too because I think that's important. Going to the beach and sitting by the water. Oh God, I just, I yearn for that. And um, I, I'll tell you, I, I hadn't even thought about the beach way back when at this time, but one of my coaches shared with me that not to go to the beach, but like take that one day for myself. And I, I started going to the beach and I was fiending like every day, like, oh, I need to go to the beach. That was my thing. I need to go to, and it was in the summertime. So I would get up early um, on my days off, of course. And I would try to get down to the beach early and take that nice oh, walk, that's powerful. Listen, to the, listen to the waves and just throw the shells or whatever back in. And, oh God, it was just the most beautiful thing. So yes, I, for, I forgot about the beach. I should have mentioned that. No, no, definitely. Like for me, I mean, I'm in Miami, but unfortunately I wish I don't live that close to the beach, but because there's like a lot of canals by here, like every place. So there's somewhere where I go, I do go to the beach too, but it's just that I wish that is my thing. Like for me, that's my dream thing is that I want to be closer to it. If not, what? The beach house. Yes, if not, or you know what, because of the hurricane stuff too here, but really it's, it's, it's like soothing. And you know what it is? Here's the thing. I don't know if you experienced that, but I think that a lot of people, they think that going to the beach just to take care of yourself or going for a walk. Like I've had people say, oh, well, it's almost like, oh, it's a luxury. Like, Oh, well, you know, she's like, people see you caring for yourself as like, 
it's a luxury or you know you you know you your life must be like all that for you to and it's like how like how do we do this like how do we how did we get to the point where people taking care of themselves has become this thing that they can be judged for <laughs> no it's so, you know what it's sad and you know what's even sadder to hear that that one would think of self-care which is self-explanatory as a luxury no it's necessary it's beneficial it's um it's everything that it needs to be for you you know what i'm saying for yeah. us for self so how could you even look at it as a luxury that is that sounds a little crazy and yes. that's the thing, but, that, that, but you know what it is? It's because I think they see it as a luxury because a lot of people don't practice it. A lot of people have a certain view about it. Mm-hmm. So to them, you know, it could be like, you know, oh, well, you know, like I know some, like when I first, well, you and I met, I was living in D.C. at the time. When I first came back home, I remember it was like, I had, when I first came back, I had this thing, I don't do it anymore. Um, I try to go, I don't go as often because like I told you, I'm not that close to it, but I made it a point when I first got there, every Friday, I would take like three hours and go to the beach. Oh my God. Let me tell you, I was asked somebody, a family member who was visiting once told me if I was, am I retired? Oh, because they saw you. Because to them, it's like, oh, it's not normal. And I'm like, really, people? Like, is that how we view ourselves? That we're, we don't think we're that important that we have to take care of ourselves and we have to do the things that feel good and we have to go to the places where, because for me, exactly what you were saying about the beach, I understood what you were talking about exactly. Like, mm-hmm. I would tell people, like, if I'm feeling off, even if I do my regular meditation, if I haven't been to the beach in a while, I feel it. It's mm-hmm. like my soul is calling for it. Calling for it, yes, yes. I, I know exactly what you're talking about. Um, that's how I feel when I'm off, when, I, um, when I'm not doing something that I'm supposed to do for me, um, not getting my rest, um, miss my check-in, any <laughs> of those things. I'm like, I don't, feel, I don't feel right. I don't feel right. So, yes, I, I know exactly what yeah. you're talking about. Um, no, definitely. And that's what I was telling somebody. That's how I feel too. Like I say that, you know, I'm pretty good with my meditation, but if for some reason I fell off the wagon or something, mm-hmm. or let's say I did, you know, something came up and I didn't get a chance to do it today. And then tomorrow or something, and it's like, Ooh, I start feeling, I start feeling it. Like it's not, I'm not the same. You know what? It's like you're out of sync. You're not in yes. touch and you're missing something you know no i know exactly what you're talking about i know exactly. totally totally yeah actually uh marion williamson calls she calls meditation your spiritual bath and she mm-hmm. says would you go out without taking a shower and it's like and she's like if you haven't done it in a while it starts you start feeling a certain so in some way i understand what she's saying because that's exactly what i experience mm-hmm. if my meditation has been off or if i've missed a, a few I start feeling like, okay, wow, something is like off here. You know, like you said, you don't feel like you're, you're yourself, you know? Yeah, you feel outside of yourself, actually. And then something happens where little different things start to happen where if you're not paying attention, they will keep happening until you realize exactly what it is that you didn't do. Those are those little clues that we get that sometimes we don't pay attention to, you know? Yeah. You keep doing something, you're like, I know I'm supposed to be so on. You know, it's almost like you trip and you fall and you're trying to catch, you, you're tripping and you're trying to catch yourself, but you're still falling because you don't have anything to brace you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 What are your thoughts on women empowerment? OMG, my thoughts on women empowerment. My thoughts are this. I believe, I really believe that we um, are on this earth to edify one another and that's all human beings. But I also believe that every woman that is brought into this world, that is one of their divine assignments. 
that's what I believe about women's empowerment. I believe that now some of us don't tap into it. Some of us don't know. Some of us do know. Some of us are acting, you know, they're in that position to do it. But I think that that's one of our divine assignments. And I think that empowerment is something that um, is, empowerment is something that, well, when you look at the word power and when you look at the word M, so M, empowerment, I'm trying to make sense out of it. When you look at the word, it speaks for itself. It makes you feel like you're supposed to be doing something. It makes you feel mm -hmm. like you're supposed to be receiving something. It makes you feel like you're supposed to receive it, pass it on. Receive it, pass it this way. Receive it, pass it that way. That's what I think about empowerment. Mm -hmm. And I think that I also think that there is an empowerment movement, and I know we spoke about that before. There's a couple of movements, and this, I've been seeing the word empowerment all over. And yeah, I know. I really, really have been paying attention to it prior to, um, well, I know it's, we've been using it for a long time in the coaching industry. Yeah. And I know women, or they're used in businesses, but right now it's being used a whole, whole lot. So that should be that should be an indicator that something is going on and we're on to something. Yeah. Everyone deserves to be empowered, men as well. But yeah, for, totally. Yeah, for us, I believe that that is one of our divine assignments because when you start looking at sisterhood and when you start looking at connecting to people and when you start hearing the word soul connections and soul conversations and soul this and 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 um, empowerment that and all of these different words those are all words that mean that we are supposed to be we're supposed to be feeding each other we're supposed to be giving and and, and gladfully and thankfully receiving and um when you're empowered it sets off a certain level of um, transformation i think that's what's supposed to be deliver to us some sort of transformation through empowerment, if that made sense. Does that make sense? No, it does, definitely. And actually, when you mentioned about how the your word um, the word has been used and used, I don't know if you, if well, if she recently passed a few months ago, Louise Hay, I remember yeah. she would say she did not, she was like, she never got into, she never liked the word self-help. She called it self-empowerment. Right. You know how people would say the self-help industry or self-help books she calls it self empowerment because it's such a it's a it's a more it's a bigger term it's a it holds its power more it's more meaningful than yes. help you know it's like you're helpless you know where you're in being empowered so totally yes. yeah what do you stand for in life and why what do i stand for in life mm -hmm. and why do you stand for that Well, can I tell you something? I, I want to yeah, say, I don't think I shared it with too many people. So when I was um, searching for my purpose and my passion in life, and I was just, you know, trying to just figure it out at one point, um, I just turned 50. So I'm on the second half of my life. I'm thankful and grateful to be here for that. And um, That's awesome. And you're about to retire. Well, I know you have next, next plan, but still, that's awesome. Yes. But you know what? When I broke my name down in the acronym, um, I was like, hmm. I started looking up my name and what it meant and all these different things. And I asked my mother and father, why did they name me what they named me? My name is Alisa. And when I began that search, I um, the acronym for my name that I came up with is a light igniting self awareness. Wow. That is That's my powerful. name. Is Lisa, and I'm a light igniting self awareness. That's what I stand for. I stand for love. I, I stand for myself. I stand for other women. I stand for family. I stand for um, sisterhood. I stand for relationships. I stand for um, serving. I stand for living. I stand for laughing out loud. 
I stand for just being a human being in this world, trying to make a difference, um, doing what I'm supposed to do and even more. And I, I, I just, I stand, I stand in my power. Mm -hmm. Totally. Thank you. What do you believe the world needs more of? Oh gosh. You want you mean to name one thing or, or a couple of things? Which one? You, <laughs> Whatever you feel comfortable saying. If you feel like you want to say more than one, you want to say two, three, it's fine. Totally. Okay. But if there's one that's more for you, like that's one, like really, but it's up to you. Okay. I think the world needs more um, love. More light. And more laughter. Mm, I and love that. I, I, I believe that we need more love because that's one of the things that I'm missing. You have so many different things going on out here in the world. And when you peel back the layers and you, when you're trying to figure out what, what happened in, in these different situations, it all boils down to love. It all boils down mm -hmm. to something that someone did not do for said person. You yes. Know, people out here uh, killing people and then you find out they have mental health issues. You have people that do all these different things and it's because something happened to them. And something happened to them because somebody failed to do something. So we need love. Yeah. The world needs light because a lot of people are living in darkness. You know, that's why we need light. And we, we yeah. need laughter because we need to first of all it's healthy for the spirit okay but I, i'll tell okay so new york and new jersey and, I, and i'll say new jersey first and i'll compare it to the south when you go to the south you have so many people that smile and that greet you and that aren't in a rush but when you're up here in the big city and i'm a girl born raised and educated in the city yeah there's so many people that are uptight for no apparent reason. I mean, even if you are, even if you do have a valid reason to be uptight, put a smile on your face. It'll change your day. And so yeah. that's, why I think, <laughs> that's why I think we need more laughter. We need more laughter. We need to laugh more and we need to watch more comedy shows and we need to laugh at ourselves sometimes and not be so serious and uptight and angry because we don't have time for that. We just don't. Yeah, no, it is very true. And, you know, I think that that is the thing. I also feel like sometimes people feel that if there's stuff going on, if there's, you know, it's like they can't relax, they can't enjoy, you know? And like, really, if anything, we need to learn about how to dance in the rain. Yes. yes. You know, I really feel like we need to because a lot of times people just think that you have, like, it's almost like, oh, well, you know, I can't smile. I can't this because everything isn't fine in my life. Right. It's like you have one life. Tomorrow you may not even be here anymore. Yeah. You know, it's funny that you say dance in the rain because um, <laughs> we, me and my kids, even my kids are adults. My 33 yeah. year old and my 20 year old and my 15 year old grandson, he's not an adult, but you know, I, they're still my kids. So yeah. it's funny. So when we want it to snow or when we know the snow is coming and there might be a delay or whatever. Well, this is what we used to do. We haven't done it in a long time. And in Nor it used to snow like on my days off. So, you know, I would go to the store, get potato chips and all types of junk that we should not have. And, you know, prepare for the storm or, or prepare for the snow. But we would turn our pajamas inside out and do our snow dance. And we would just like dance around the house, you know, for like 15, 20 minutes. Yeah, that's nice. Like, like, like you know, like just praying for it to snow and for us to be snowed in because we knew that was our time, you know, to watch TV together, to play games together, to laugh together, have our hot chocolate, have our tea, make breakfast in the morning, and then get out there and shovel the snow. <laughs> and then get out there and shovel the snow. So I like dancing in the rain. I no, love definitely, because that's the thing, you know, I think that we have this whole notion and for me that's one of the things you know sometimes I, I'm like wait a minute like if people around me something's going on with them and mm -hmm. I noticed that for me like I really I mean not that I, I have my days too but it's like 
I really try not to allow life to put me down for a long time, you know, yeah. and I try to, you know, where I think that either, there are some people like if they're having some money issues or something's going on, it's almost like they can't like, they can't smile. They can't be there for someone else. It's almost like they're waiting for things to be okay to like enjoy life again. Yes. And actually, you know, I often say that I think that also when you smile, like you were saying, or you dance, like what you were saying about, you know, going and doing the, you know, turning the pajamas, like, you know, that's so like fun. And it's like, life is, you know, if life is so short and actually, I actually feel like in a way, when you take time to smile and you take time to dance and enjoy, you actually may shift things much sooner because worrying or being like this or whatever is not going to make it. It's not like, you know, it's not going to help, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> worrying definitely isn't going to help. Worrying no, definitely. totally not. I, totally. I, just wanna I forgot to share this with you. I have the most amazing tea. It's ginger and turmeric and black pepper. It oh, wow. Oh, so good. Oh, my it's God. Amazing. It's so good. Yes. That's how come I'm like, mm, I keep up. Like, are you, are you, get, did, did you make it yourself or you got it in the, a tea bag? I have it in a tea bag. I didn't make it myself, but. Which brand that's is what, it? Oh, gosh. I forgot. I will, I'll, well, you I'll, can message me. I'll yeah, look it up and message me on Facebook because I'd like, yeah, cause I love turmeric. I love ginger. Yes. And you said pepper, that I, black pepper. I'd love to check it out. It is beautiful. Totally. I, I, one, of my, one of the things that I wanted to do at one point in my life, I did want to make my own teas. So I have something coming down the line um, um, for heal, you know, because I recognize that I am a healer um, that, I, that I'm creating for the mind, body, and spirit. Great. Wow. That's awesome. Within the next like year or so. Awesome. Yes. Oh, you're going to have, you're going to have the time too, right? Yes, I am. <laughs> That's yes, awesome. Am. That's yeah. awesome. Great. So thank you. So this, this concludes the interview part, Elisa. Thank you so much. I want you to get it. You know, I want you now to tell my audience, if there's anything you want to add about yourself. And also I'd love for you to tell them about your work, where they can connect with you, your website, all of this info will be under the video. And if you're listening to us through Apple Podcasts, you can visit my website, www.lovelightcoaching.com, lovelightcoaching.com to get her information. But still, you can give them your social media, mm -hmm. how they can follow you and, and your website. You can find me on Facebook at Coaching uh, Inside Out. That's um, Coaching from the Inside Out. You'll see me mm -hmm. uh, have a logo with um, black CEO and uh, on, that's on Facebook on Instagram. You can find me at I am Elisa J green. I'm on Twitter uh, as a woman like me. And um, my website is www.elisajgreen.com. Great. Great. And so you want to tell them a little bit about what you do and who you do it for? Absolutely. I help women break out, break down and break through walls that hold them back from pursuing their true purpose and passion in life so they can be about their business. And uh, I'm a certified life coach, a self-care specialist, and a connecting catalyst, helping women connect to what's really important and helping women connect to other women who like to brainstorm, who like to have heartfelt conversations just as women in business, and to who likes to build relationships. Yes. And we need to, that is so important for us to empower one another. You know, yeah. it's so important for us to do that. That is empowering. So that's how we can get further ahead. You know, it's like the people, you know, it's like we can get further ahead together, not alone. Yes, yes, yes. yes. You know, yes. great. And so thank you. Created, yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry, I also created a group. It's a small group, but I'm looking to grow the group. So because I realized that I'm good at brainstorming and I met some other women that, love brainstorming too and we throw ideas back and forth with each other and their ideas are their ideas my ideas are my ideas and if they use my idea they can have it and vice versa so i have a little small group and it's called sisters um connecting from the inside out so i plan on really you know st uh, strategically um 
opening that group up to women that are interested in just building relationships and having brainstorming sessions or masterminds or whatever, oh, good. Just connecting on that level. That's awesome. Well, I mean, I don't know say if by the time, if, you, if you've opened it up by the time I share this early next year, or you know what, when people visit your website or your Facebook or social media pages, they'll be able to see how to connect with you on there. So that's a great idea. That's mm -hmm. awesome. Yes. Thank you. Hey. Thank you. Okay. So thank you again for joining me today, Alisa. I hope you all, those of you who joined us, those of you who are listening or watching who have viewed this video, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it helpful. Please give us a comment um, under the video. If you're listening on Apple, Pod, um, Apple Podcast. Give us a review. Let us know what you think. Share what you got from this. Was this helpful? And if you really want to, you don't want to miss any other episode, every Thursday I make a new episode. I share a new episode. You can get them directly in your inbox so you don't miss it. Subscribe to my email list below the video on after Alisa's information. You'll see a box where you can sign up for my, subscribe to my email list. And um, when you do so, you will, in, you will, you know, like I said, in addition to getting this every Thursday, getting the new episode, you'll also receive um, tips and inspiration from me on Tuesdays. And as and once you sign up and confirm your subscription, you'll get my free gift, which is my seven questions to help you reconnect with yourself and have an aligned message in your business. Mm -hmm. And if you're listening to us to Apple Podcasts, same goes with you. You can go ahead and visit my website. And if you want to subscribe to my email list as well, um, just visit www.lovelikecoaching.com. Thank you all. Thanks again, Alisa. And love and light to all. Take care. Good blessings. Love and light. Thank you.